have your way. Come on, have your way. I give you the glory. Mighty God. Come on, somebody. Just begin to glorify him. Come on, glorify him. Clap those hands if you will. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. We glorify. We magnify. We praise the name of God. Look on our streaming audience. Look on those via Facebook. Come on, God. Look on every home. Come on, God. Look on every child. Come on, look on every family. We give you praise. Bless them indeed. Do it for your glory. Come on now. Out there in cyber world, give him praise and glory. We thank God for you. We welcome you today. Come on, somebody. Just another minute. Give him glory. Clap those hands wherever you are in your home. Come on in the sanctuary. Clap those hands. Give him glory. Yes, God, we praise you. Yes, God, we glorify you. Yes, God, we magnify you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Praise him. Come on, somebody. Bless him. Come on, give him glory and honor. Oh, come on, glory, 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 glory. Oh, come on, give him glory, glory, glory. Oh, come on, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Go, oh, come on, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's bless his name today. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the name of our God. Great and mighty is our God. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him honor. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship him today. God is good and he is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, set an atmosphere where you are. Hallelujah. So he can come and sit down in the midst of us. Hallelujah. And bless the name of God. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on and we shall be glad. Hallelujah. We shall be glad. And rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Oh magnify the Lord with me. And let us. Let us. Let us. Come on. Let us. Hallelujah. Exalt his name together hallelujah come on put those hands together and just begin to give the lord praise hallelujah oh we honor him today hallelujah they should say it's another day's journey and i'm so glad hallelujah got any glad folk hallelujah any glad folk on facebook today come on type in there i'm so glad it's another day's journey and I'm so glad, hallelujah, hallelujah, the Lord has kept me, hallelujah, from all evil, hallelujah, they say, with my mind stayed on Jesus, hallelujah, oh, we honor him today, and we give him praise, hallelujah, oh, we just welcome you in to just worship with us today, hallelujah, we come to lift up Jesus, no greater name on the earth than the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory, give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory, give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Come 
on. We come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. We come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. We come to do our dance and magnify him. We've come to do our dance and give him praise. We come to do our dance and magnify him. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We've come to do our dance and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Come on, we come. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. What you come to do, church? We come to lift our hands and give him glory. Come on. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. We come to clap. We come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. We've come to clap our hands and send up Judah. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. We've come to dance. We've come to do our dance and magnify him. We've come to do our dance and give him praise. We come to do our dance and magnify him. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come to do our dance and give him praise.
Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Come on, tell him. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, out of your soul, just tell him, come on, church. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more.
and truly the Lord is good today and his mercy endureth to all generations. Amen. We thank him for his truth endureth forever. But this is the day that the Lord has made and we've come, I believe somebody's come to rejoice and be glad that the Lord is here. Praise the living God. We'll take this minute to honor one of our mothers, amen, that she has just turned 89, Mother Harper. Turned 89, praise the Lord. And God has blessed her life. We thank God for her, amen. And we want to acknowledge all our mothers, Mother Ernie, amen. She always pressing, amen. We thank God for those who are with us, the seasoned saints. Amen. And we bring, matter of fact, everybody born in November, I mean October, what is it? No, August. Just joking, just joking. Amen. We celebrate you. Everybody is somebody, but we truly don't want to forget our mothers. Amen. For this is, a, imagine what it is for them. We know how it is to us, so we can imagine what it is to them during this time. Amen. But we are living in a critical time, and we praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. We're going to go into um, the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, chapter 3, in the first verse, just going to read a few verses in your hearing as we go forward. I still have a burden concerning the church and the believers um, during this time. Amen. I can't uh, shake what God is dealing with me about it. And so I just pray that God's will be done today. Amen. In the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verse 1. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. And he, all the children of Israel, enlarged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. There you shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way thereon for. And Joshua said unto the children, unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wondrous wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Verse 7, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And I want to share with you, where do we go from here? Um, verse 3, when he says, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the priests and the Levites bearing it, you shall remove from your place and go after it. And then verse 5, no, the end of verse 4, he says, for you have not passed this way before. Father, we thank and praise you this morning. We glorify your holy name for your goodness. We thank you for waking us up with a right mind and a desire to worship you. We thank you, dear God, because we know these are the last days and there's a great falling away. But, oh God, you touched our hearts to desire to worship you and then to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you this day, God. We magnify you for taking us through this week. We magnify you for your health, for the health you've given us. We thank you for your covering. We thank you for your provision. 
And, oh, God, as we come into thy sanctuary, oh, God, we pray that there be the freedom, the liberty to magnify your name and give you the just that you deserve. Because you are a great God, a mighty God, an awesome God, a God who wants us to perform. And, Father, we won't fail to praise you, God. We ask you to speak to the hearts of every hearer, God. We bind up the hand of the enemy. We come against the spirit, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. We come against this assignment to stifle, to steal, to kill and destroy. We ask you, O oh God, to open up, O oh God, the portals of heaven. And, O oh God, touch every heart, every mind, God, and bring us into the place closer to thy bosom until you call us home, O oh God, in that great notable day when we hear your voice and be caught up to meet you in the air and so shall we ever be with you and with the Lord. In Jesus name I pray for your help, I pray for your guidance, I pray for your amen, your assistance, amen, that your will will be done in Jesus amen, amen. Come on give God a celebration of praise. Oh hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. In times like these, we need a Savior. Amen. Amen. In times like these, we need a Savior. Where do we go from here? Amen. I've been wrestling with the two seasons that we've been in, the season prior or, or uh, pre-pandemic to now where we are. Amen. How the Lord is just dealing with me as an individual, as his servant. And I just want to share with you what the Lord has given to me. Amen. Now, the scripture tells us, not the scriptures, but with this particular saying, which says, where do we go from here? It's a very popular saying. It originated in 1945. Uh, where they will apply it to that which is political, economical, or social, or moral issues within a country or maybe a business. But in our culture, it became very famous to uh, one of our uh, leaders, Martin Luther King, and he had a speech in 1967 where he gave at the uh, Christian Leadership Conference, and he used this to, to, to note uh, the burden that he had on his heart for what was going on during that time. And he also wrote a book, Martin Luther King wrote a book he authored, and then the title of that book is Where Do We Go From Here, Colon, Chaos, or Community. And what it refers to is the burden that he had, because that during the time when he was living, he was living in the crossroads. The country was in the crossroads of a lot of things that were going on. And he focused on the, the radical revolution of the values, amen, that was going on during that time. And he had a burden for the challenges that they were facing, the things that they were facing, political and social, amen, just like we are now in our season. Uh, more, more notably, currently, uh, Oprah Winfrey used the same slogan in one of her spotlight talk shows, and she called it, Where Do We Go From Here?, and in that talk show, she dealt with the current disparity of racism within the country. But I want to bring that to where we are now, how we're living, amen, in our predicament within the kingdom of God. We all know that things are not getting better, that we're in an upheaval uh, regarding the pandemic, regarding the politics, regarding our social issues, amen. And we have to realize, even though th things are going, we have to look forward, and as a believer, we cannot look forward from humanity. We have to look forward from in the spirit. Do I have an amen? I know some people, we see that what's going on from the political realm, uh, where they got uh, uh, the nomination of the vice president, and we have, amen, the things that are going on uh, with all of the congestion that's happening uh, because of the pending uh, election that's coming up in November, and we have some people who are just deep down in their spirit and through in the talk, the bywords that, oh, if, if this happens uh, in the result of the elections, things will get better. Uh, some feel that, that the outcome of the election, uh, depending on what side 
of the park you're standing on, uh, that there would be a solution to all the problems that we're facing. Uh, amen. That the, the problems that we're dealing with, amen, will come to some type of revolution. Uh, but when you look at that, that's meaning that the resolution or the solving of the problems that we're dealing with would be only answered through the government, which is a man time and a mankind empowerment. Amen. We that are citizens of the kingdom of God knows that things, things are greater. We know that we that have been birthed in the kingdom of God, that Jesus is the author and the finish of our faith. And we don't look to the carnal government for our release or deliverance, but we look to the hill from which come of our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Do I have a witness here? The Bible declares that he is the king and his kingdom of our God. We understand that his government is upon his shoulders and his kingdom, there will be no end. I want to remind you, saints of God, that no matter what we're going through or what's happening, that you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen. Where do we go from here? We cannot get caught up in the whirlwind or the cesspool of society and let them teach us how to think and where to go in the direction of worldviews. We as believers in Christ, if you never did it before, you got to get hold on who you are as a believer. Amen. It's, it's, it's just burning to me how many people are trying to go back to where they have come from and they're trying to bring uh, amen the issues of Egypt uh, into uh, this transition towards promise uh, they don't like how uh, why do I have to do this why do we have to do that now in this situation why can't we act the way we did before God brought us into this season and with that type of mindset you will never see where God's taking you because you're always looking back to where you came from we got to remember saints of God to have the right attitude regarding, amen, the current event. We need to know saints of the living God, the heartbeat of our creator. We have to know the heartbeat of our savior regarding your personal life as well as being a stone in the pillar of the church. Currently, the church is not reflecting, amen, the character of who God is in the earth. Currently, we find that you go to and fro in discussions in topics uh, that a lot of saints are going in their own bubbles uh, and we as a church as large are still diverse uh, and it seems to me to be a little bit more confusing uh, than it was prior to the pandemic. At least we were organized in error, the church at large. We were organized uh, in disobedience, the church as large. Amen. We had a system uh, of what we were doing. We had principles uh, prior to the pandemic uh, and who we are. But now it seems as though things have been broken up uh, and there's a little bit of confusion uh, in regards uh, to the plan uh, of the true and living God. I want to remind you because this is my responsibility. All our days is numbered. The Bible says teach us to number our days and apply our hearts uh, unto wisdom. In my heart I don't want to repeat uh, the errors of the past. In my heart I don't want to get caught up uh, in the world view or the church view uh, that doesn't have God as their focal point. Do you hear what I'm saying? The church, listen, saints of the living God. If you're streaming now, if you're listening to me, amen, but whatever uh, media uh, apparatus, I want to remind you, uh, praise the living God, that you, if you are part of the church, uh, amen, and the church at large uh, is very significant uh, in the eternal plan of God. You got to understand that the church uh, is very significant in the eternal plan of God. We understand the concept conversation between Peter, amen, and Jesus when he said, who do men say that I am? Very profound statement. He said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. But we want to take it in the context of what Paul gives us in the book of Ephesians, uh, amen, 122, where he says uh, he has put all things under his feet, amen. Prior, amen, or pre-pandemic, uh, the church at large did not walk as though, uh, amen, the world system was under the foot of God. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible declares uh, in that same verse that Christ is the head of the church. We got to understand of God uh, that when God called you into the kingdom, he did not call you, amen, so he can be a self-servient uh, to our desires. For God has a 
master plan. God is the architect of society. God is the architect of humanity. I want to tell you to keep it personal. He's the architect of your life. And due to the fact that he gave you liberty to make decisions, amen, don't mean that God is not, amen, the author and the finisher. Oh, yes, sir. God brought you in. God knows you in. And he knows what he wants for you to do in the middle. Do I have anybody listening to me today? The Bible says that the church, amen, is Christ's body. It's the fullness of him that filleth all and all. In the Greek, it says that the church is called the ecclesia. Amen. A called out body of believers. But we're finding out that there's a melting pot between the church and the world. It's very difficult sometimes to see who's who and to know what is what. Because we talk about religion does not mean that we are the sons of the kingdom of God. Amen. Because we profess a certain idea does not mean that we have been born again. But right now there has been a Marriott of uh, amen the dynamic between the world's children uh, and God's children. But the Bible teaches us uh, amen that the church is called the Ecclesia. When you look at that word it is a compound word. That compound word is in two two things. It says eek, which means uh, out of. And the second part is kelio, which means to call. So what is the church? The church is uh, to call out. You in the church because he calls you out. No man can come except the father do a draw him. We got folks now that have not been drawn, uh, amen, into the kingdom. Y'all ain't saying nothing here because currently they're not part of the church. But if you're in the church, you got to know who you are. You got to know how you got here. Amen. Come on now. Amen. By grace are you saved through faith. Uh, God gave you a gift. Uh, it's not based on how pretty you look. It's not based on your talent. But God called us in, hallelujah, out of darkness into uh, his marvelous light by his love go thank you Jesus uh, and so the body of Christ uh, the ecclesia the church uh, amen is a body of called out believers and so now that we're in this season uh, we got to know that God is doing something God doesn't do things he's not schizophrenic he's not bipolar amen God knows exactly what he's doing amen God has a plan for man amen God has redemption for man God has an answer amen he's the all wise God. And if God is doing this now in our season, amen, I wasn't back, amen, in first century. I wasn't back, amen, in the first century church. I wasn't, amen, back in the day. Uh, this is my day, but what do I have uh, to give me God's revelation uh, to how I should act and look? Uh, I have the holy book. Uh, and in this book, God says, here is the blueprint. Amen. Come on now. Uh, and God has given me direction on how to conduct myself, uh, not only in in the world but also in the house of God. I need your help today Lord. Uh, the Bible teaches us praise God uh, that we are the ecclesia. We are called out. I believe that God uh, has pulled things away from us uh, to teach us some issues. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Help me Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. I believe God uh, he always brings us into a place uh, where he wants to minister to us. Uh, uh, come on now as individual uh, and as a Christian nation. Uh, amen. God uh, in his great all wisdom. He's an all wise God. Uh, amen. We have to understand that his ways uh, are not our ways. Uh, uh, come on. His ways are past finding out. Uh, God uh, is infinite uh, and we are finite. Uh, in other words, God uh, and his wisdom and knowledge uh, is without limits. Uh, but because we're in this realm uh, in the natural, uh, amen, we are limited uh, in our comprehension uh, amen in the things of the spirit world uh, and we got issues because of our fallen nature with the things in the carnal world uh, but God is letting us know uh, amen when we look at culture and it comes down to the church uh, we have lost a lot of ground uh, what do you mean there sir uh, we lost a lot of ground uh, Jesus says and he declares uh, as he begins to prepare amen the, the church 
church, uh, amen, to facilitate or to finish the ministry. Uh, he says, you are going to be the ecclesia. Uh, amen. He's building the ecclesia upon himself. Uh, uh, come on, in the kingdom of God. Uh, but man uh, with his wisdom, uh, and man by wisdom, no, not God, uh, begins to take uh, away what God has established. Uh, and so we don't call or see ourselves uh, as uh, called out. Uh, we see ourselves as the word uh, that we see in church culture, the assembly. Uh, we see ourselves in church culture, the congregation. Uh, we see ourselves in church culture, the council, uh, or the convocation. Uh, we have been brainwashed uh, not to see ourselves uh, as called out. Uh, oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Uh, and so that be the case. Uh, we see ourselves then, uh, amen, as a religious institution uh, more than uh, the nation of the true living God. Uh, I come to remind you, saints of God, Amen. That we are one nation uh, under God. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Uh, oh, come on now. Uh, we are more than an assembly. Uh, we're more than a congregation. Uh, we are called out people uh, to reveal God uh, in our lives, full of grace and truth. Uh, oh, Lord, I need your help. Uh, somebody give God a praise in this, please. Uh, and so uh, I want to remind you, saints of the living God. Uh, amen man we got to take note uh, of what God is doing uh, uh, come on now uh, they have something that they call recidivism uh, I may be saying it wrong uh, when somebody gets incarcerated uh, amen and because they have been brainwashed uh, to the system uh, they don't know how to function uh, out of the system uh, and therefore because they don't know how to function out of the system uh, they find themselves back uh, into the system uh, that kept them in bondage. Uh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, it's the same thing about addiction. Uh, we have culture. Uh, amen. Get caught up. People get caught up uh, with addiction. Uh, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, sex addiction. Uh, amen. Gang addiction, whatever. Uh, uh, gambling. Praise the living God. Uh, but there are systems in place uh, to help an individual psychologically uh, to bring them out uh, of the addiction. Uh, and a lot of people get out, uh, but while they're out, uh, they're not walking uh, or trying to develop uh, this new life. Uh, and what happens is uh, they get, oh God, uh, oh God help me. Uh, they go right back. Uh, amen. To get addicted again. Uh, oh yes sir. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, and next thing you know you say I thought you was free. Uh, oh well I tried they say. Uh, I tried what was wrong. Uh, they did not walk uh, in the direction of the new place. Uh, saints of the living God. Uh, amen. Pre-pandemic uh, we had a mindset of church. Uh, Pre-pandemic uh, we had a mindset of uh, of church culture but we got a lot of us are fighting and waiting to go right back to where we were but God is saying no you got to learn this new place and in this new place I got to get some stuff out of you I got to open up your eyes I got to open up your spirit so you can know where I'm taking you in this new place but a lot of folk say no I got to go back to where I was I feel strange in the liberty of God I feel strange in this new place oh God I need some help come on and help me with a praise in this place I need some help oh I ain't pre preaching a couple of weeks my voice is jacked but y'all pray for my strength Oh, hallelujah. Listen here. Did you get my point? You got to check your spirit. You have to, Bible says, let every man examine himself, whether he be in the faith. You got to examine yourself. Why do I feel, why do I feel strange? Some folk now are waiting on the sidelines for the church to go back 
to pre-pandemic. I'm going to tell you, keep on waiting. Because the Holy Ghost said, I ain't going back. I got a plan of God to make you greater, to make you better. Oh, come on now. Oh, well, we can, amen, understand, amen, the two, the dynamics between the two ideas. We cannot just confess what we believe. Amen. Oh, come on. We can't get comfortable in what we believe. What the church has done, can y'all just pray for your pastor? Amen. We were in a place of comfort. Come on here and compromise. Come on, pre-pandemic. We was in a place of comfort. Come on now. We was having church. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And a lot of us, the church at large, was compromising and was in the bed with the world. But what does the Bible declare? The Bible says that they that are a friend with the world is an enemy of God. Do I have a witness here? We can not be a friend of the world and be an enemy of God and then call ourselves justified in our actions. And so because God has a master plan, he shut it down. Oh, come on here. Because his saying is the last say. Oh, Lord, have mercy. There is nothing in the Bible. If you have it, send it to me. Where the church is to look, is to act like the world. There is nothing in the scriptures that tells us to adapt to the culture, to the mindset, to the lifestyle of the world. But people have a problem because of religion, how to separate themselves between the two kingdoms. But as a kingdom citizen, come on here, this world is not your home. You ought to give God a praise. Oh, hallelujah. Help me see this. Oh, God. The Bible teaches me that God created this entity called the church which is supposed to be amen a conviction to the world a light to show them and direct them to God the church is a place for purification oh come on the church is a place for redemption the church is a place for sanctification do I have a witness I need you to say it I can't hear you but you got to say I'm called oh come on I'm called out the Bible calls you uh, the people of God uh, if you're called out. Uh, amen. In the book of Genesis chapter 12 uh, the Bible says that Abraham uh, was asked to come out from Earl of the Chaldean. Uh, he was asked to come out of his daddy's house uh, and God's going to show him a land uh, full of milk and honey. Uh, the Bible says uh, that God's promise to Abraham. He says listen uh, I'm going to make you a great nation. Uh, so God has given Giving him a promise. Huh? Do you hear me? And then what God calls uh, Israel at that time first mentioned uh, he calls them the people of God. Huh? Uh, come on now. Huh? And the people of God may be in the world huh? but not of the world. Huh? If he, uh, Come on. He could have left Abraham with his father and called him people of the God. Uh, but he took them out from that idolatry uh, and called uh, those people that are called out uh, the people of God. Uh, do you get my point? Uh, and in Deuteronomy chapter 7 the Bible says but thou art a people unto the Lord God and he has chosen you we are chosen saints of the living God amen to be a special people I want you to remember that saints of the living God amen everybody ain't getting caught up everybody ain't gonna get all the blessings but we are called amen to be a special people unto God amen above all people amen Amen. Not with the people, uh, but we're supposed to be above all people. Uh, amen. If you belong to church, uh, I don't want you to think that Deuteronomy uh, is an Old Testament ideology uh, and is an Old Testament concept. Uh, but in the book of Titus, uh, chapter 2, verse 14, uh, the Bible says uh, that Jesus gave himself uh, that he may redeem us from all iniquity uh, and 
purifying unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works I know it don't sound popular but I'm not trying to preach to be popular in this season I want to preach what God is saying in this season I'm not trying to live amen to fit in because I know because of the blood that I stand out do I have a witness here and then Moses amen at the time of bringing Israel out he goes to Mount Sinai he goes to the mount to hear God when he has this conversation with God in the book of Exodus chapter 19 God tells Moses I see y'all pitched in the wilderness oh Lord y'all are camped around this mountain Mount Sinai and when Moses got in conversation amen because God called him to a higher level you're not going to hear God being in a level with the world you got to get in a place in this season to be above the world stop trying to compromise and fit in with those that don't want God that don't want to be great shut it down now understand you're special there's a price to be paid when you're special there's a price to be paid to be different oh Lord have mercy you picked out to be picked on do I have a witness and God told Moses I want you to tell the children of Israel I want you to remind them what I did for them in Egypt oh Lord and I brought them out of Egypt with e on eagles wings can you have a flashback God says I want you to remember when you was clubbing and acting crazy I want you to remember when you was partying and getting high I want you to remember the stuff that came out your mouth and into your body I brought you out of that and I didn't do it lightly I had to use an eagle's wing I had to use a strong bird I had to use a great vessel that vessel was Jesus Christ to bring you out in the church you're not here because you want to hear y'all ain't saying nothing here you're here because God brought you out out into his marvelous light Jesus I mean God told Moses I brought you out to myself do you hear that saint God said I brought you out to myself oh my God I didn't bring you out to show your butt off I brought you out so I can show myself off in you somebody need to know in this last hour that God want to show off in your life show you off with righteousness show you off with holiness show you off with a praise God want to bring a change in your life I don't know where you're sitting on the couch in the kitchen in the bedroom in the car but give God the highest praise watch this watch this he's been brought out to, to himself and he doesn't stop there but we stop there I got a little bit to go, so I can't, I can't take my time. And this probably be a series. He said, I brought you out. Have you not seen what the Israel, what I've done into e Egyptians and how I bring you out on eagle, eagle, eagle wings? How I brought you to myself. Verse 5, now therefore, we stop. God brought me out. As far as the church goes. Pandemic. Oh, we say, hey, blessed and highly favored. But it doesn't stop there. Verse 5, God says, now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and don't just obey, but keep it, 
if you do that, then you're a particular treasure. Good God Almighty. We come to come in. We great, we're grateful to come in. But we don't want to obey or submit. Today's church, watch this. A religious person wants everything that God offers. We want the blessings of God without sacrifice. But the Bible declares we've been bought with a price. We're not our own. Hebrews, no, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, help me God, to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Oh God, we got to stay crying out to the Lord and say, Lord, have your way. I'm trying to help somebody that's part of the ecclesia to shake off every weight that's hindering you from being what God has called you. Oh, God's about to do something, but you got to make a sacrifice. Don't sit in this pandemic with your hand out. I'm seeing saints sitting in the pandemic with the hand out. They got the hand out, elder. They got the hand out. They got the hand out. Oh, what can the world do for me? What am I going to do? What are we going to do, Weezy? What are we going to do? During this pandemic, you better have your hands up. Oh, hallelujah. Don't have your hands out. Have your hands up. Surrender to his will. Surrender to what God wants to do in your life. And be renewed by your mind. Come on here. In the book of Exodus chapter 19, and I'm almost done. Verse 6, he says, listen here. If you do that, you shall be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Praise the living God. Mike is coming out. I need another one. He says, amen in 1 Peter 2 and 9. For God wants you, amen. He wants us to be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That we shall do what? Come on, read it in your own word. To show forth the praises. Of him that called us to darkness into his marvelous light. And as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. And many that believe on his name. Amen. God says, listen, if you called on me, amen, I got you. Born, amen, with the blood of Jesus Christ. Not the will of the flesh. Pre-pandemic, we was born out of the will of the flesh. Oh, yes. I'm going to say it again. Pre-pandemic... We were born out of the will of the flesh. Whatever that, come on, what, we, what was going on in the church, we ate it up. Come on, somebody, test it. Praise the living God. Not born of blood, 1 John 1, 13, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Now, saints of God, not of the womb of a religion, we have to be birthed in the womb of relationship. I'm talking to those that's in the season. In the middle of this season. I'm almost done. Y'all all right? If you all right, give God a praise. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. He's my rock and my savior. Oh, Jesus. Somebody join my fan club and say, help me, Lord. Join my fan club and say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. And so we got to listen, saints of God. I'm going to leave y'all with this thought. We cannot come in this thing like we did. Because we're going to be greater if we hold on to God coming out. We got to be more than confessing Jesus and get into a commitment with Jesus. A lot of folks are confessing, but confessing and belief is not enough. Now, those are pre-pandemic. Said I was told that if a man believeth that Christ rose from the dead, hallelujah. Uh, he shall be saved. Uh, and so in your mind, uh, he, he, you think uh, that believe is enough. Uh, I'm about to rank this radio personality. Uh, every time on his broadcast, uh, he said, if you're not saved.
saved. Uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ in your life, uh, he said, what I want you to do uh, is to say this prayer. Uh, and he said, oh, Lord Jesus, uh, come into my life uh, and that shall be saved. Uh, and then he ends it and says, uh, that's it right there. Uh, you're going to be all right. Uh, and I'm going to write him now because uh, the Holy Ghost is telling me, uh, you've given him a half bottle. Uh, you're not full. Uh, y'all ain't saying nothing here uh, can I prove it to you uh, belief uh, is not enough uh, in James 1:19, uh, the Bible says uh, thou believest that there is one God uh, and thou goest well uh, the devils also believe uh, and they tremble uh, so what does that mean uh, the devil believed too uh, but watch this uh, the devil can't praise God uh, the devil doesn't obey God uh, the devil doesn't respect God uh, the devil don't honor God uh, the devil doesn't submit to God uh, the devil don't serve God uh, so belief uh, and confession uh, is not enough uh, it's necessary uh, but you got to go farther uh, so during this pandemic uh, I need you to con con dedicate yourself uh, amen commit to the plan of God uh, be committed uh, to what you commit to uh, you are a witness uh, that God is worthy uh, when you commit to him uh, you show how important it is uh, to serve God uh, y'all are here uh, you showing commitment uh, I'm showing commitment uh, for this is the Lord's day uh, and it's marvelous in my eye uh, when you're home I'm showing commitment uh, I still praise I still play church music I still talk about Jesus cause I'm committed to my Lord and Savior I'm sold out I'm not vacillated between the rap station and God's music I'm sold out oh Lord and God said being sold out you give him the glory watch this thing whatever you committed to your labor for for it. Huh? If it's important to you, huh? you commit to it. Huh? You are not going to commit huh, to what is not important to you. Huh? Can I, I feel the Holy Ghost? Huh? You hear me, sisters? Huh? If the brother can't commit to you, huh? you are not important to him. Huh? You need to change your channel. Huh? Block his text. Huh? Block him off your Facebook. Huh? Get him off your Instagram. Because huh? if you're not important to him, huh? he ain't worth you going going with. Huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? Huh? You can do bad all by yourself. Huh? Come on my sisters. Huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? Huh? Same with us brothers. Huh? If what we got to focus on huh, is not worthy of sacrifice huh? it is not that important huh? to supersede God. Huh? Do I have a witness? Huh? Don't let this chaotic world huh, distract you from living from God. Huh? Satan knows if you commit. Huh? Satan knows if you sell out. Huh? Satan knows if you sell out huh? that you are a threat. Huh? He knows if you give God a yes. Huh? He knows if you keep getting up. Huh? He knows if you keep giving up. Huh? He knows if you keep giving up. Huh? He's got your life. Huh? I come to tell you, huh? fight huh? the good fight of faith huh? and lay hold huh? to eternal life. Huh? Be determined. Huh? I'm not a God. Huh? With the last thing I have. Huh? Don't let your faults huh? put you down. Huh? Don't let your mistakes huh? make you want to give up. Huh? Don't make you fail. Don't let your failures huh? have you throw in the towel. Huh? Keep on fighting. Huh? That's why Paul said huh? having done all the stand, stand. Huh? Somebody need to give God a praise. I'm going to bring it in. I'll make this a, I guess it'll be a series if the Lord say the same. Where do we go from here? Where, where am I going to go from here? Yeah, you've been sitting and thinking and devil putting all kinds of thoughts in your head. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You ain't no need of moving. Everybody got the virus. 
Ain't no need about, well, I guess I'll move. I guess I'll relocate. Relocate where? Space? We go to Mars as we're trying to get to Mars. I don't know why they're trying to get to Mars. They ain't doing but get up there and call everybody ninjas. <laughs> Alien going to come with six heads. Look at them ninjas. Let's kill them. <laughs> Let me shut up. In this season, you better know. I want to put some changes in your life so you can see and learn of a greater God. Second Chronicles 16, it says the eyes of the Lord goes to and fro. To and fro. He goes to and fro. The whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Where do we go from here? Play something soft there, son, on the keys. I'm going to pick it up because I didn't preach the part of my text from Joshua. I'll pick it up. Well, let me throw this in you. In the life of Jesus Christ, three and a half years, he ministered. God manifested in the flesh, expressed image of God, full of grace and truth. He established the 12. He laid the foundation for the church. He showed what the church should look like, signs, wonders. He showed what the church should look like and he taught them this, this standard on the Beatitudes so they can have the proper attitude of how to live in the kingdom. At the end of his ministry, he was crucified according to the plan of God. He was crucified. It was a very upsetting time because everybody knew what Jesus was doing in Jerusalem. Everybody knew the rumors. Everybody heard the miracles. Everybody knew about the crucifixions and the stories of the fact that this man, Jesus, who claimed to be the Christ, he's not in the tomb, but he has risen from the dead. There's two men walking from Jerusalem the revival is over. The conference is over. The church service is over. Let's go back home. Let's catch the plane. Let's go back to our routine. Watch this. Let's go back to our routine. We was there when he was crucified, but let's go back to our routine. And they're discussing like we do when we come from conference, when we was coming from revivals, when we was coming from church services that were really high. They're talking about the move of God and the greatness of God and the things that were funny. And while they were discussing, Jesus shows up to him with them and begin to share with them and question them to get them to open up what they understood from the events that had happened. He ministered to them so they can comprehend the events that would happen. And the Bible says in their conversation, their eyes opened. And when their eyes opened, that was the juncture when Jesus could begin to teach them what was going on in the law of the prophets. In other words, when their eyes was open, Jesus was able to give them a fuller revelation of what he wanted to do in the earth. And a latter part of that, the Bible says that he broke bread with them and they did eat. We're in this season now where some are just walking, talking about what happened. But Jesus is looking for somebody he can walk with and teach and give them the bread of his word to bring them into the next level. I come to tell y'all today, we're in transition in this season. I don't want to end up going back to where I came from when I know that God is trying to shape us where we're going. We are so blessed because in this image has a dynamic group of ministers. We're not trying to replicate each other. We're not trying to outdo each other, each one in their own measure. Amen. Balance. Balance. You need balance. You need a balanced meal to be healthy. Saints of God, I want to leave you with this thought. Don't go through this season and end up post-pandemic and be the same way you were pre-pandemic. The Bible says in the last days, Jesus is going to come. He's going to catch people unaware. But unto them that look for him shall he appear a second time. Without sin unto salvation. Ho, oh, hallelujah. And listen, you don't just want to expect him to come. You got to prepare for him to come. Did you get that? Huh? We expect him. Yeah, I expect him. I know Jesus coming soon, but you ain't preparing. You're not trimming your lamp. You ain't got no oil. 
You got to prepare for him to come. You got to give him a yes. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to minister to you. And I know that we're, we're in a whole new, whole new dynamic <laughs> through media, revelation, but I'm going to pray. I'm praying. I'm going to ask God to do something supernatural today to rebuke the devour, destroy every yoke. I'm asking God, amen, that with the comfort that I have been comforted with, that I can comfort you. Oh, hallelujah, that we can be comforted together. Amen, because as a pastor, I'm going through. I'm going through death, hell, and destruction. And I don't like what's going on. But my, un, my, but my disappointment of what's going on is bringing me into a, a revelation or a seek to what God wants to do. Did not our hearts burn with us while we was in the way? Don't let your rut be a grave. Don't let him steal your joy in this situation. Don't let him capitalize off your flesh. Grab hold of this prayer right now and let God break the yoke. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah, God. Hey, Father, let the word fall on good ground. In the name of Jesus, God, we come against every soil that's not accepted to, to your divine word. Uh, you said, Lord God, as a promise, as an amen, as a covenant, uh, you said in thy word that you hasten your word to perform it. Uh, and oh God, we stand on what you said. Uh, oh God, we pray that as you, amen, hasten your word, uh, that you will perform it, that you will manifest uh, your word that will go out and not return to your void. Uh, but you had a, a purpose. Uh, and why you said what you said today, uh, there's somebody, God, uh, They've been sitting in the dark place. Uh, there's somebody called uh, that's been in a heavy garment, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but oh God, you said for this cause uh, that Christ came. Uh, he came to deliver uh, in the love of God. Uh, amen. And God had anointed Jesus uh, full of goodness uh, who went about doing good. Uh, amen. To deliver uh, all those whose hearts uh, uh, come on you are delivered. God. Uh, oh God, you told us, Lord, uh, don't let our eyes, uh, don't let our hearts trick us. Uh, you know, oh God, uh, our secret prayers. Uh, you know our tears at night. Uh, you know those that are weak. Uh, you know those that have fallen. Uh, but oh God, uh, we need your holy power. Uh, help us to lift up uh, our hung down head. Uh, we give you praise in the sanctuary. Uh, we give you praise in the living room. Uh, they looking at me funny because huh? I'm crying huh? and ain't nobody did nothing to me. Huh? Go on to the bathroom huh? and let God have his way. Huh? Get in your car, go for a ride huh? and let God have his way. Huh? Go out in the backyard huh? and let God talk to you because huh? God wants to get down, huh? down in the deep parts. Huh? Oh, the inward parts of your belly. Huh? God wants to dig a well. Huh? Oh, Lord. Huh? There's a plan for your life uh, to redeem you. Uh, come on and give him glory. Uh, come on, shake off. Uh, I pray for the sick among us. Uh, I pray, oh God, uh, against all the adversary, uh, the disease and afflicted, uh, the blood of Jesus uh, be against you. Uh, we come against uh, demonic ailments. Uh, we come against uh, satanic attacks. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, whatever we ask in prayer, uh, you said God uh, you said you will do it uh, we pray against uh, satanic attacks uh, in the name of Jesus uh, not by our might because uh, our righteousness uh, is a filthy rag uh, but by your spirit uh, oh Lord uh, deliver uh, peace uh, peace
peace, uh, peace, say of God, uh, peace to the broken spirit, uh, peace to the fearful, uh, peace to the infected. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, look on the elders, uh, give them strength, uh, give them strength, God. Uh, they're heavy, uh, oh God, uh, give them strength. Uh, look on Mother Hopper, uh, oh God, uh, give us strength. Uh, look on Mother Ernie, uh, give us strength. Uh, look on us, God. Uh, oh Lord, uh, have your way, uh, have your way. Oh, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Saints. Woo! I am us. It's critical. I'm going to say this because this has been on my heart. Well, I seek prayer. I was seeking prayer. Everybody in their own measure. Don't let Satan do to you as he has done. What I mean by that? Pre-pandemic, we gossiped each other. We talked about each other. We threw each other under the bus. We criticized. We judged each other. We started rumors. We had issues with each other. Couldn't touch and hug certain ones. Hated church. Hated how long and loud it was. Oh, I ain't like her prayer, but I liked his prayer. I ain't like his message, but I like her message. You mean God died on the cross to give you his grace for you to be a judge? Cut it out. Don't do it. Don't do it. Check your heart. Check your heart. Check your heart. Let's stop biting and devouring one another. Hallelujah. I try to be a Holy Ghost preacher because the Holy Ghost preacher people think you're preaching on them. I don't know nothing nobody doing. I'm just sharing what God's put on my heart. Not go back to that. Let's go back to the old time. <laughs> Singing, shouting. Loving one another. By this shall all men that you are my disciples. That we have a love. One for another. Father, I thank you for using me today. I pray, Lord, that I pleased you and blessed someone. Jesus name please take one more minute don't turn us off but just for a minute listen to our announcements in Jesus name amen God bless you and thank you for tuning into our in his image Facebook live stream this Sunday morning we pray you were blessed by the message where do we go from here from our senior pastor and bishop Dennis Thompson please share this message you can meet us here Sunday mornings at 11. We are following all CDC guidelines. But for more messages like this from our ministry, you can continue to join us on Facebook Live every Wednesday and Friday at 6 p.m. We want to thank you for your giving, and we admonish that you continue to support this ministry. There are various methods in which you can financially support the church. You can also download the Givelify app and search for In His Image Ministries. You can download the Cash app, look for dollar sign, in his image seed. You can give that way. On our Facebook page, you can give via Square Link and PayPal. If you would like to mail in your financial gifts or write how this ministry have blessed you in any way, the address is P.O. Box 1703, Bridgeton, New Jersey, 08302. Please visit our new and improved website, at www.inhisimageministries.net. We have so many features available. We have iHeartRadio and podcasts that you can listen to the Word of God on the go. Noonday Prayer has been a blessing, and it is still going on every Monday, hosted by our very own Elder Josephine Boleg. For prayer requests, please email us at ihibreakthrough.com 
at gmail.com or inbox Josephine Holland Boleg on Facebook. Your monthly pastor's aid pledge can also be given to one of the elders. You can also give that through one of the other venues such as Cash App or Giblify. If you purchase a ticket for the play Queen Esther and you have not yet received your refund, you can see Sister Day. We want you to share, like, and subscribe to this ministry. God bless you all. Stay safe at least six feet apart and wear your mask. God bless you.